There's been concern across the country over the rising price of sugar, but it's now easing up a bit after it went to as high as 7,000 shillings per kilogram. Even after Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, Amelia Chamba, the set a price ceiling at 5,000 shillings per kilo, does not much change. But during the State of the Nation address, President Yoram Seveni blamed the high prices of sugar on the influence of some politicians, but he did not volunteer any names. The sugar price is now high because there has, there has been, some, been some paralysis, some politics in, in, in the local area. And, and if you are not careful, we may lose that... Uh, that uh, we, 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 uh, I will study it and give you what I think. If they are still being disturbed by pirate sugar companies that were licensed by our system to operate in the traditional sugar producer zone of K. We are going to rationalize this dangerous chaos in that sugar industry. The president also faulted sugar manufacturers for not adding value to sugar for it to attract better returns. We need sugar now. You can imagine we have been producing sugar all this time, but the sugar which goes into the Coca-Cola comes from outside. Because the, the, the sugar these people produce is not pure enough to be used in the sodas. The, the syrups, like these quality chemicals people, I think they, they are importing uh, starch from India, imagine. With the people of cassava, with the people of, uh, of maize. President Seveni cautioned people against mixing up matters of politics and the economy. My sister, sister of Gwari here, she's a big, a big uh, something somewhere. <laughs> now, we are now very friendly. But, but at, at, the beginning of, at the beginning of our government, we were not so friendly. And I was aware that she had her something, something, somewhere. <laughs> but I could not touch it because of politics. I could not say, because she say is against me politically, I undermine her. On the creation of jobs for the youth, the president downplayed the role of agriculture, saying the service sector provided better opportunities for the youth instead of agriculture. The massive number of children, young people is a huge force for production and ownership. This does not need land. Land is, you see, this is the whole problem. You are now stuck in agriculture. Agriculture, agriculture. No, forget about agriculture. In the United States, the proportion of the population in agriculture is only 2%. This is a population of 320 million people, a land area of 3 million square miles, but only 2% are in agriculture. That is the same story with the UK. The ones who are in agriculture are enough. Let them stay there, those who are there. But this huge number of children in the town, you should not send them to agriculture. Let them sort of, let them process. <laughs> let them go in services, because, because when you send them to, to, to the villages, you, you just want to cause what we call disguised unemployment. Because how many people do you need to operate to, to manage one acre? But most Ugandans leave off agriculture, with some statistics putting the numbers engaged in agriculture at over 70 percent. The president dwelt a lot on his efforts to create jobs for the youth, saying he has secured government land near Entebbe that was due to be grabbed where work sheds would be set up for the youth. That these youth are transformed from being hydro and unemployed into wealth creators 
and job creators. As was the case last year, the president said government would again capitalize the Uganda Development Bank to provide interest-free loans to agriculture. In his 2016 State of the Nation address, President Museveni said Uganda loses $888 million from importing textiles. He re-echoed the need to support the Buy Uganda, Build Uganda initiative. Contrary to the common complaints by the people and statements made by several government officials that the economy was on the cliff, Museveni said the economy was doing well. I have been seeing people writing in the papers, the economy is very bad. What, what? Poor people, they have no eyes to see. An economy which has got surplus electricity for the first time. An economy which has got surplus electricity for the first time cannot be in a bad shape. Unless you have no eyes to see. Shouldn't watch today. NTV.